Welcome to this month's CSF podcast, aiming to keep you up to date with the latest information and data in rheumatology. Well, today's podcast, I'm going to review two papers that look at the safety of two different JAK inhibitors across their treatment indications. And that's, I hope, going to help us to further characterize the safety profile for JAK inhibitors and perhaps give us something to think about as to what is clinically useful to extrapolate when we're going from data across different indications, which is actually something that we tend to do intuitively. And, you know, is that the right thing to do? Well, the first of today's papers uh, comes from Professor Jeff Curtis and colleagues, and it aimed to evaluate malignancies and their associations with baseline risk factors and cardiovascular risk scores with TOFIS versus TNF inhibitors in a CV risk enriched RA population from the oral surveillance study. And in the second paper today, Peter Taylor and his team analyzed data from the baricitinib clinical trial program for rheumatoid arthritis, atopic dermatitis, and alopecia areata to help further characterize adverse events of special interest for JAK inhibitors in at-risk populations. So I, I hope you'll find this really clinically relevant and useful. But always uh, to access detailed summary slides of the papers, go across to cytokinesigmon.com. We've got all of the resources you'll need there. Okay, well, the first paper is a malignancy risk with tofacitinib versus TNF inhibitors in RA results from the open-label randomized controlled oral surveillance trial. Now, patients with RA have around 10% increase in overall malignancy risk compared with the general population, and a notably higher risk of developing certain malignancies are well known, for example, that lymphoma and lung cancer are more prevalent. At risk of cardiovascular disease is determined by validated risk prediction tools is associated with an increased risk of cancer in the general population, suggesting shared risk factors and, and pathophysiology. The, the relationship between targets and enteric DMARDs and malignancies, however, requires further study. Now, previously from oral surveillance, trial you've been hearing a lot about, in patients with RA aged more than or equal to 50 years with more than or equal to one additional CV risk factor, demonstrated an increased risk of malignancies with TOFA versus TNF inhibitor. Now, this study sought to assess malignancies and their associations with baseline risk factors and cardiovascular risk scores with TOFA versus TNF inhibitors in a CV risk enriched RA population taken from the oral surveillance study. So the instance rates for malignancies excluding non-melanoma skin cancer uh, were uh, higher with tofacinib combined in individual doses versus TNF inhibitor. Remember the, the, the way that analysis was done, five milligrams, 10 milligrams, or the combination uh, for the primary. The, the risk of lung cancer, which is obviously the most common subtype with tofacitinib, was higher with tofacitinib 10 milligrams uh, as opposed to the TNF inhibitors. In the overall study population, the risk of malignancies excluding non-melanoma skin cancer was similar between both TOFA doses and TNF inhibitor until month 18 and diverged from month 18 onwards. Uh, the, the hazard ratio for combined TOFA sitinib doses 0.93 with a confidence interval 0.53 to 1.62 from baseline to month 18. Compare that to 1.93 confidence interval 1.22 to 3.06 from month 18 onwards, uh, an interaction p-value there of less than 0 0.05. Now, Cox analysis identified baseline risk factors across treatment groups for malignancies, excluding non-melanoma skin cancer, uh, lung cancer. Uh, interaction analysis generally did not show statistical evidence of interaction between treatment groups and risk factors. History of atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease or increasing cardiovascular risk scores were associated with higher malignancy IRs across treatments. Okay, so in patients with RA aged more than or equal to 50 years with more than or equal to one additional cardiovascular risk factor, the adjudicated malignancy rate excluding NMSC, lung cancer and NMSC were increased with tofacitinib versus TNF inhibitors. Lung cancer was the most frequently reported malignancy in tofacitinib treated patients. In the overall study population, the risk of malignancies excluding NMSC with tofacitinib was consistent with that of TNF inhibitors up to month 18 and diverged beyond that time. The interaction analysis of treatment groups by each baseline risk factor generally did not identify risk factors with a differential effect on treatment comparisons. And the instance of all malignancies was higher in patients with a history 
of atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease and with increasing cardiovascular risk scores for patients treated with TOFA and TNF inhibitor. That, of course, could affect uh, the results of shared risk factors rather than some of them interaction. Okay, so our second paper, baricitinib safety for events of special interest in populations at risk. Analysis from randomized trial data across rheumatologic and dermatologic indications. Well, I think, again, we know the background here. There's a possible class effect for JAK inhibitors associated with particular adverse events, MACE, uh, venous thromboembolism and malignancy. And this is a, a study that Peter Taylor and his colleagues did to look at adverse events of special interest in the baricitinib clinical programs for RA, atopic dermatitis and alopecia areata. Now, they split the population into two groups for analysis, patients with low risk, that is younger than 65 years with no specified risk factors, or patients deemed at risk, which was at least one of age 65 years or older, atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease, diabetes mellitus, hypertension, current smoking, uh, HDL cholesterol, um, 40 mg uh, per demiliter, uh, BMI, uh, around uh, above 30 kilograms per meter squared, poor mobility on EQ5D or history of malignancy. So you can go to the paper to, to refresh your memory of those. And the incidence rates per 100 patient years of MACE, malignancy, VTE, serious infection and mortality were calculated for each group. The key data, well, uh, the data sets included baricitinib exposure up to 9.3 years for RA, 3.9 years for atopic dermatitis, 3.1 years for alopecia areata. In the first group, patients with low risk, which was 31% of the RA group, 48% of the ADA group, and 49% of the AA group, pretty much as you'd expect. IRs for MACE, malignancies, VTE, serious infection, and mortality were low. Now, in patients at risk, and this is now 69% of the RA group, 52% of the AD group, and 51% of the AA group, the incident rates of these adverse events of special interest were low for patients with dermatologic indications. However, the incidences increased for patients with RA at risk in comparison with patients with low risk. So these data are derived from integrated clinical trial safety data sets for baricitinib that show a low incidence of MACE, MI, lung cancer, VT, and overall mortality in patients younger than 65 years of age without risk factors. Even for patients with risk factors, the numbers are minimal for the dermatologic indications, atopic dermatitis and alopecia areata. But remember, the trial duration there is quite a bit shorter, so let's just keep an eye on that. It does raise the question as to whether it's clinically useful to extrapolate risk factors identified in RE to the dermatologic indications. I think we have to be careful about that, as always. And it's important to remember that risk factors established for the RE population are identifiable through health screening. Thus, the physician and patient can make a decision on appropriateness and acceptability of initiation or continuation of treatment with, in this case, baricitinib, taking into account those particular risk factors. But I would argue in, in our diseases where there is well-recognized attendant comorbidities, we should be looking at those risk factors regardless of our therapeutic treatment decisions. Okay, well, if you want to look at the publications uploaded this month and access other podcasts and resources, head across to sitekindsigling.com signaling.com. It's a great resource, slides, abstracts, summaries, um, all available for you to use. And I think you uh, will find it a, a real treasure trove. I certainly do. And as always, thank you for your attention. Don't forget to subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcast media from, and make sure to let us know what you think by leaving a review. Absolutely determined that we continue to improve here at the website. Thanks very much for your attention. Thank <laughs> you.